Leftists around the world were surprised to learn that among the Jews slaughtered or kidnapped from Kibbutz Be'eri, I don't know about the pronunciation, are leftists who have fought for Palestinian rights and inclusion for decades. Vivian Silva is but one of the 200 hostages taken by Hamas. She is a leader of Women Wage Peace, a large grassroots movement created after the Gaza War of 2014, working towards a peaceful resolution for Palestine Israel. Jewish solidarity means knowing the names of Israelis like Vivian Silva, as well as those of her comrades taken hostage, calling for their safe release. We can do better by learning about organisations and movements that are political homes to many of the murdered and kidnapped that include less radical organisations such as the Coalition Against Racism in Israel, the Association for Civil Rights in Israel and Israelis Against Racism. There are also inspiring, secular, peace-seeking, feminist and anti-racist organisations with whom the international left may feel more alignment and solidarity that range from Women in Black, Tayush and the Dharm Workers' Party, to Hadash and Breaking the Silence. Breaking the Silence, uh, amazing. Ex-Israeli soldiers uh, reporting on the military uh, reality of... Um, occupation and invasion of Gaza. These organisations may not fully support the stateless vision embraced by many left radicals, but they are a sign that there are people on the ground seeking a different path forward. And as the left generates curiosity about an Israel left with which we may feel aligned, we will indeed find that individuals, groups and communities with whom we can open dialogue and relationships of solidarity. Reclaiming our ethical mooring as leftists means building on the legacies of the Zapatistas, Kurds and anti-authoritarian black leaders who hold fast to left ideals. When leftists see Zionism as the key driving force behind European Jewish refugees' reach for asylum in Israel-Palestine, they fail to understand that the vast majority of refugees did not want to go to Israel at all and would have been grateful to live in the US, Canada, Britain, but no country would take them. Most refugees hailed not from assimilated Western European cities or countries. They were rural shtetl dwellers, think fiddler on the roof, and many were illiterate religious people unfamiliar with the anti-statist Zionism of Martin Buber or with ide ideological Zionism generally. And even if there was a universe in which these refugees had been exposed to thinkers like Buber, they had no access to living and breathing exemplars of left idealism as we have today among the Zapatistas and revolutionary Kurds that may have opened the way toward federal or confederal formations that transcend a nationalistic framework. The left has reached a historical moment where another world is indeed possible in Israel-Palestine if the minds, hearts and imagination of the Palestinian and Israeli people work together in unison. If the utopian reach of these words seems naive or engenders cynicism, it may be a sign that we need to reclaim our revolutionary nerve as well as an unapologetically idealist vision. Every revolution, every humanistic endeavour for social and political justice emerged from a shining cauldron of ideals. These ideals have moored revolutionaries to their principles, buoying them to keep moving the arc of history forward even when facing moments of weariness that are part of the long struggle for freedom. This is a horrific moment to be a Palestinian struggling to survive in Gaza while fearing for the many who will continue to perish during this war. This is a terrifying time for Palestinians in Gaza who are aware of being used as human shields. This is an appalling time for Jews of conscience living in Israel, witnessing their government as it commits mass murder, while they themselves also face an existential threat. Powerful nations can indeed, at their whim, determine Israeli Jews as a collateral loss should they choose to reconfigure the Middle East into a more expedient geopolitical order. This is also a trying time to be a non-Israeli Jew, watching anti-Jewish racism combust across the world, wondering if this is the beginning of yet another period of massive Jewish exclusion, violence and death. It's a deeply painful time for all Jewish humanists who grieve Palestinian suffering and devastation. 
The left loses its integrity when we support or remain silent or apologetic regarding authoritarian entities like Hamas that denounce every value the left stands for. We regain our integrity when we hold fast to our principles and compassion for every human being because if the left is anything, it is a dream for humanity rising toward principled freedom. As leftists, we must identify and support members of both the Palestinian and Israeli left who seek a world that reflects our ideals of democracy, social justice and a culture of ethnic and religious freedom and inclusion. When we fail to mourn the loss of any human life, we are a left that's lost its humanity. For leftists to recapture our shared moral compass, we must find and support those who seek anti-authoritarian, fully anti-racist, feminist, queer and truly democratic futures, wherever and in whomever the seeds for such futures lie. We must lift up all freedom-seeking people as they build new institutions shaped by a logic of democracy and a radically inclusive humanism that sees that a life is a life, no matter whose body, whose heart that life is beating in. I really encourage you to read the article on Z Network and revisit the article because it's extremely rich, uh, extremely nuanced. There's a lot in there. Please uh, give this very under-platform perspective the audience it deserves and, and share the article as much as you can. And if you feel like it, this audio version, uh, if you know anyone who would rather digest this kind of thing while doing the washing up or driving, um, I hope this audio version is useful.